Hey y'all, and welcome back to another episode of TZ Teaches. I'm Sir Pinkbeard, and in this video, I'm going to be covering the information that you need in order to use the mesh modeling workspace as accurately as possible. Now, this is just the intro to the series where we talk about all the mesh modeling tools. So we're going to talk about the operator panel. We'll talk about the mesh modeling workspace itself and how to actually use mesh selections and do the basic uh, movements and transformations that we talked about in our previous video where we covered the movement, rotation, and scale. So without further ado, let's get started. We'll start with the operator panel because this is a panel that you're going to use quite a bit of while you're mesh modeling and generally while you're doing anything in Blender. It's a panel that allows you to change the settings of the last done operation. So let me show you. If we move this cube on the y-axis uh, two units, what we're going to get in the bottom left-hand corner is a box that pops up. Now this box is the operator panel. If you click on this drop-down arrow, you'll get a box that shows you the settings of your last done operation. And you can change this. So if we uh, unrestrain it from the y-axis, we can also move this negative two on the x and maybe two on the z and we will have moved our cube fully. Alternatively, we can just reset it back to zero if we didn't want to do that, or we could have hit Control Z, either one. But this is the operator panel, and it will show you all of the options that maybe you didn't see or know the hotkeys for while you were making the operation, but that are options for you once you've confirmed your operation. All right, so the next thing I want to talk about is the difference between object mode and edit mode. So when you launch Blender 2.8, you'll generally end up in the layout workspace as default. And the layout workspace has you in object mode by default, right? So you're able to manipulate objects around in your scene. You can place them wherever you want. But this doesn't actually allow you to change the model shape and size itself, right? You can still scale it, but it's still going to be a cube, just a slightly bigger cube. So what edit mode allows you to do is it allows you to switch uh, into a setting where you can actually deform the shape of your object. So we can kind of move these down, maybe move these out a little bit, and now we have an object that is no longer a cube, and we did that in edit mode. Now I'm gonna undo those changes real quick, um, but just so you know, that's the point of edit mode. Edit mode allows you to change the shape and structure of an object but it doesn't actually allow you to move anything. And we'll talk about that a little bit more specifically in a second. So how do we switch between edit mode and object mode? So either you can go up to the top left here, hit object mode or edit mode, or you can simply hit tab while you're in any mode uh, and it will take you directly into edit mode. Now in Blender 2.79, that was it, right? You were in object mode, you hit tab, you're now in edit mode, you have access to all the tools and you can either use them or not. But in Blender 2.8, we actually have the different workspaces now. Instead of doing our modeling in the layout workspace, what we can actually do, and what I prefer to do, is switch over to the modeling workspace for our objects. Now the reason I prefer to do this is that each workspace has its own camera angle. So if you see I've moved the camera angle here, if we switch back to layout, we're still looking at the cube as it was. So the layout essentially allows you to lay out your scene and see the whole process. And then if you switch to the modeling workspace, you'll be able to change the objects in your scene without having to worry about changing anything as it actually has appeared and set up. Now here's the thing, when you go into the modeling workspace, uh, you end up with all of the, the possible tools that you can use on the left hand side. We also end up with some uh, new settings up here in the viewport header. And so let's take a minute and just talk about those real quick. Now we have a selection mode. Um, we have our select tool active currently. And so we have our default selection stuff like we talked about in a previous video. But now we actually have some extra selection tools that help us work with mesh anatomy. So we have vertex select, edge select, and face select. And you can toggle between them by hitting the one, two, or three key above your uh, QWE on your keyboard. You can also hold shift and select so that way you could select both edges and faces uh, without having to switch between them. But if you, I find switching just simply using the numbers makes it really easy to just choose what you wanna select when you're trying to select it. You also have some options here that will allow you to change your view, select different things, um, add in new mesh, 
or change some stuff. We're not really going to go into these through this course, but just know that if we bring up one of these options, uh, there are some pretty helpful tools in here that I encourage you to explore on your own. Now, earlier I mentioned that while you are in edit mode, you're not actually moving the object. And so you might say, Pinkbeard, well, what if I do this? Well, sure, we moved the mesh around, but you see this orange dot that we've left here? This orange dot represents the object's actual location in the world scene. So if we go back to the layout workspace, you'll see that though the mesh is over here still as we set it up, if we try to, say, rotate this on the z-axis, the line now appears at the point of origin, and it's not actually rotating our cube, uh, around the mesh, it's rotating it around that point of origin. If we were to try and move it, uh, we would be moving it using that point of origin. And so the point of origin is a very important concept. And so it, later on, as we go through these tutorial videos, you'll start seeing why it's important and how to place it in your scene and how to place it on the mesh. But for now, just you want to try to keep your mesh around that point of origin as much as possible. So if you end yourself up in a situation like this, you can simply rectify it by going back to the layout or switching back to object mode, which you can do by hitting tab in the modeling um, workspace, right-clicking, choosing set origin, and then hitting geometry to origin or origin to geometry. And you'll also notice there are some other options here, such as origin to the 3D cursor or whatever, if you needed to move it around. But just to return the object back to where it was, we will... Um, move the origin to the 3D cursor and then move the geometry to the origin and then we're good to go. All right, so back in edit mode and we're gonna finish up talking about uh, what actually makes up mesh anatomy. All right, so mesh objects are actually made up of three pieces. As we previously discussed, those pieces are vertices, edges, and faces. And vertices are just individual points um, of mesh data in your scene. Edges are simply the lines between those vertices, and they will never connect more than two vertices at a time. So if we were to add in, uh, let's just do a, a loop cut real quick, and we'll add this in. If we switch into edge select, these are now two separate edges, because an edge can only have two vertices connected to it at a given time. So these are now two separate edges, and this is now its own edge, because they only have two vertices connected. Now we also have faces, and with faces, there are actually three types of faces that you need to know about. We have tri-faces, which are just triangles. Um, if we convert this to a triangle by hitting Control T, you'll see that this is a triangle face. It's pretty obvious. We have quad faces, which are faces with four vertices connecting it. Now it's important to note that a quad face does not have to look like a square or a rectangle. It can be any shape as long as it just has four vertices connected to it. And then we have ingon faces. Now ingons are faces that you kind of want to stay away from, but I'm going to add one in just to show you. And so we'll just kind of knife in some geometry here. And if we select this face here, you might look at that and go, hey, that's a quad face. But it's not, because actually, if we switch to Vertex Select now, you'll see that there are five vertices that make up this one face. You can also check this by going to the bottom right-hand corner of Blender 2.8 and seeing the vertex count on that particular face. You'll see it's five out of 14 possible vertices in or on our cube. So ingons are kind of the worst thing ever. You really don't want them. Um, they're not that bad, I suppose, if you have them, but generally you want to try, you want to try to stick to tries or quad-based faces. And so if you end up in a situation where you have this, you could just go ahead and uh, make a triangle here so that you end up with a triangle and a quad face, and that's a much better way of modeling. Now, while you have those three options, uh, general rule of thumb is try to keep your models as quad-based as possible. They animate a little bit better if you're animating. They smooth a little bit better than tri-faces do, and they aren't as unpredictable or difficult to work with as ingons. So try to keep your models quad-based as we go through this to, or these lessons. Now, just like we can scale, rotate, and move objects while we are in object mode, we can do the exact same thing in edit mode. And you might want to note, though, that the effects can be a little different. So let's say we scale this one edge here, right? We've scaled the edge. The edge is now larger than it was, 
but it's not just scaled that one edge. It's also moved the faces and reshaped the faces that those vertices are connected to. So now this face here is no longer a flat uh, quad face. It's now pointing out in a direction. It's still a quad face, but it's not the right shape anymore. Uh, the same happens if we try to rotate that. It's going to continue to change and manipulate the shapes going uh, that we're working with. So you can do all of those same things. We have the same tools here and gizmos with the transform tool. You can kind of play around with this, but those those things still exist and they are affected by uh, your face select, edge select, or vertex select. All right, so that's pretty much it. We've covered the basics of uh, edit mode and mesh modeling. The modeling workspace is pretty much the layout workspace. But now going forward, we're gonna talk about these individual tools, how they work, how they manipulate the mesh, and how to use them to create some pretty cool things. All right, guys, I'm Sir Pinkbeard. I will see you in the next video.